Second chances are often hard to come by in rock music. It can often be a very fickle world. Um, it can often be a very close-minded world. Uh, but occasionally, people do get a second chance. They get a rebirth. They get a chance to either redeem themselves or do something completely different. And it can be more successful, either commercially or artistically, than what they were originally known for. Um, there's plenty of success stories of people that had a second chance. Um, Peter Gabriel had a second chance when he left Genesis and, you know, arguably became a more successful uh, entity on his own. ACDC got a second chance when they... Um, Brian Johnson joined the band uh, after the death of Bon Scott. <laughs> Bringing it to metal... Des Fafara got a second chance um, after the absolute dross of Cold Chamber, although that seems to be on the resurgence, and um, and became a uh, a legitimate metal frontman in the much more kind of heads down metal band Devil Driver, um, who got a lot of acclaim. Those are just three examples, um, and the band I'm going to be talking about today are very much um, looking for that second chance, and. Um, I'm going to essentially put the case forward that they really deserve it. Um, so the band I'm talking about today uh, is No Devotion, um, which features Jeff Rickley, uh, the singer from the um, acclaimed post-hardcore uh, punk slash emo band uh, Thursday, um, and the um, the musicians, uh, the former members of Lost Prophets. Um, I think... Let's get let's address the elephant in the room right away. I don't believe that any number of people associated with somebody who does despicable, horrific, disgusting things should be in any way tainted or tarnished by the acts of somebody else. Um, the world's a cruel place and I think that always will be the case that these musicians are in some way tarnished by that. But I really hope it's not the case. Um, because whatever you think of their music, you know, you can think it's crap. And I personally don't really care for Lost Prophets. I don't think the people associated with Ian Watkins um, deserved the, uh, the raw deal they got dealt. But at the same time, I think anything that they do actually come up with should be viewed purely objectively. Um, they don't deserve any extra sympathy, but they certainly don't deserve any extra derision at the same time when we look upon their output. Um, so no devotion, getting into that, that's as much as I'm going to say on all that shit. It's on the internet, it's everywhere, you know the story, you can find it elsewhere, I'm interested in the music. So moving on to the music. No devotion, um... I first became aware of them about a year ago. Um, they released um, a couple of songs, and I wasn't really kind of that taken with them. Uh, I didn't think they were bad. They were kind of a mix of New Order, um, kind of, I suppose, post-punk, um, new wave kind of sounds, with Jeff Rickley's uh, vocals on the top, really. So it was like just, uh, just plunked on top of uh, some... Slightly derivative, um, in my opinion, representations of like Joy Division and, and New Order and stuff. Um, so I wasn't that taken with them. I didn't really give them a second thought. But I thought, you know what, good luck to them. Um, and that's, you know, where I thought my relationship with this band was going to end, uh, musically speaking. Um, and then um, when the album uh, dropped uh, two or three weeks ago, um, it's called Permanence. I heard a lot of good things about it. I heard, um, you know, the, the, there was a lot of talk about it, uh, mainly positive. Uh, so I took it upon myself to kind of check it out. I first listened to it a couple of weeks ago, and, and I've been increasingly listening to it ever since. So it, it, it's certainly something that's actually intrigued me, and um, and certainly something that I think is worthy of discussion. We don't just do heavy metal bangers uh, on, on this channel. Um, I think there's there's a wide variety of different types of rock music and um, sometimes, you know, it's nice to have a little change of pace. So so this album, 
Um, absolutely worlds apart from Lost Profits and even from Thursday, of the two outfits associated with it, you probably say it's slightly more closely associated with Thursday because of the atmospheric textured guitars and um, you know the more kind of mellow moments of Thursday you could definitely say is more associated with but certainly Lost Profits is totally poles apart um, if you are looking for the poppier side of uh, of the spectrum here if you're looking for those um, kind of catchy radio almost pop punk kind of songs um, then you're not going to get them here uh, if you're looking for the catchy end of Thursday or the catchy end of Lost Profits this is not necessarily a catchy album. This is a strikingly mature album. This album is kind of a bit of a synthwave album. It's it's. Um, I was really taken aback by the layer and the textures and the almost post rock atmosphere on this album. Um, the opening track "Burn" has a few aspects of like disintegration here, a cure. These like just miles and echoes of chorus guitars, um, just beautiful kind of lush soundscapes um it's very atmospheric you're not going to pick loads of riffs out of here um the guitars are a textured instrument the working context with the uh, the samples and the keyboards uh, as well um and it, there's a real um there's a lot of reverb on jeff rickley's vocals um on a lot of this album so you know it's it's got a very kind of um almost like mogwai except it's interesting yeah i think mogwai are boring do one um but yeah, there's, there's a very kind of echoey kind of um, approach to this, particularly vocally. And so the production, there's a lot of reverb around, uh, and um, it's something that continues throughout. Now, there's, um, there is kind of poppier songs, there's darker songs on here. There's, there's a fantastic uh, third or fourth track on there called, um, what's it called? Eyeshadow, um, which has got some lovely kind of dark, bitter lyrics again a very gothic atmosphere it reminds me a lot of the cure um some lovely lush soundscapes and jeff rickley's voice on on here is just um it's just absolutely uh, breathtaking sometimes um it's a very restrained performance in a lot of places but when it really wants to let loose that beautiful clear tone um that, that so many people have tried to to kind of copy but never better um then it really brings the song to life. These are these are often more compositions than songs in a lot of places, but it's not something that's kind of bored me or lost my attention. Um, there's there's a, there's a lot of um, certainly kind of mid '80s influence throughout, and all all the most um, all the best aspects of kind of mid '80s music. So you know we're talking Echo and the Bunny Men. We're talking U2 circa. And the kind of the period just before they they exploded with the Joshua Tree, so the unforgettable fire is is a real reference point on here. Um, so there's there's a lot of kind of dark uh, dark material on here. There's a beautiful instrumental uh, on here, um, and then we've got um, more of a change of pace um, single. It sounds like a, a real hit single called Stay. Uh, that's not a cover of the uh, the Sash uh, '90s hit. Unfortunately, that would be fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's a much more kind of poppy approach. And uh, you can tell they've hallmarked that for the single. But nonetheless, it's a nice bright spot that kind of breaks up the pace rather than a cynical kind of, right, we need a Trojan horse to, to break through this radio door. Uh, and then there's a song, I Want to Be Your God. That's probably my favourite on there at the moment. Just epic vocals, a bit more kind of crunch on the guitars. Uh, there's a certain drive on this song. Um, but you know, all throughout, it, it just is something that's best listened to as one composition. Um, I'm really surprised by it. It's um, it's the album that Tom DeLonge of Blink 182 fame would have liked his band Angel of Airwaves to sound like. This is a more sophisticated, mature, well executed um, Angels and Airwaves, which was just Tom DeLonge with like some sub U2 delay pedal nonsense in the background. Um, without the vocal ability to carry it off, um, which of course Jeff Jeff Rickley really has the vocal ability to carry it off. So um, I I really recommend checking this album out. Um, now, if you hate it, that is absolutely fine. But if you hate it because the music's crap, that's that that's fine. Forget about the context of how this band came to be. Everybody deserves a second chance, and I believe they should be viewed in this way. This album has really kind of surprised me. Um, 
it's something that I've been revisiting a lot, and I think um, it's one of the uh, the most interesting, arresting, um, emotionally fulfilling releases of the year. Uh, I would I would give this album. I'm doing a lot of these, but I would give this album a nine out of ten. Um, I'd actually be really interested to see how much further this band goes, and I'm really surprised by the maturity and um, just the uh, it is night and day between what this band was and what they are now so uh, I wish everybody luck to them um, check them out, No Devotion uh, the album's called Permanence and uh, I will see you for something a little bit more heavy, a little bit more immature um, as is kind of the usual thing so see you later <laughs>